Hey guys, thanks for joining me for another Dokkan Battle video, and today we are taking on the Legendary Vegeta Event Mission. So, what came out during this Bardock celebration was there was actually three new missions added. One for the GT uh, Legendary Goku Event, one for the Legendary Vegeta Event, and one for the normal Legendary Goku Event. Um, they all revolve around having a low-class warrior team. So, I'm not going to do a video for each one. I figured let's just do a video on the hardest one, which is Vegeta, right? <clears throat> So there are some good low-class warriors you can run. Obviously, the whole Bardock squad counts, uh, but I think the Kid Gokus are also really good. So in this video, I actually use this um, Grade 8 Kid Goku with his EZA. Now, he's not the craziest, but he stacks defense. And in Legendary events, stacking defense is very good because you actually get time to do that, right? Now, there was one really key unit that I forgot to put on this team. I did use them on the other runs, and it made it a lot easier, but I forgot to put Physical Fasha. I almost forget that I have her. Uh, physical Fasha actually really dominates. She's a super good defensive unit, and she can actually put up really good attack stats, right? So um, we've got our boy Raditz here, and I think I used Raditz as the leader. I'm pretty sure I did. Um, yeah, it was either Raditz or Bardock as the leader, but I think I used Raditz. Let me just, no, I, I, I did use Bardock because it's double Bardock. So I did use Bardock as the leader, but sure, let's try out Physical Raditz, right? He's a unit that I don't get to use very much. So we'll try them all, but uh, it was a good spot too to have physical Kid Goku and then also Int Kid Goku, and then we have the Int Go Goku or the physical Goku Great Ape. So I actually have three Kid Gokus on the team, but they're all fairly good, right? Um, I would say the Great Ape one is the worst, but he's stacking, so that works here. So I just keep him on rotation, and I think I end up with him on rotation with the physical one. Um, and I just have this other Ink Goku just kind of hanging out, doing his own thing, whatever. And there's Raditz with a big, fat 2.6 mil attack stat. You gotta love that out of our boy Raditz. Uh, 2022 Dokkan Fest right there <laughs> with a 2.6 mil attack stat. You gotta love it, right? <laughs> there's a reason I haven't used Raditz very much. I literally never pulled him, and I just bought him with coins just to have him for his leader skill and for memes. And in case I ever want to actually maybe use him in an AoE fight or something. Um, so I don't mind buying them just to get my first copy, right? But I'm definitely not going to go and like buy them to rainbow them or anything like that. All right. So I like this rotation here with the two kid Gokus. Um, and so normally putting the path, to power Goku in slot one's a lot better, but I put the great ape one here because Vegeta's close to dying and I want him to stack defense. So, you know, like four mil, it's not crazy, but it's not the worst, right? Especially for trying to get a low class warrior, like low class warrior isn't like super stacked. So <laughs> Um, having that, I don't think is the worst. Um, also, I think um, there are some like base Gokus I could have used, but I just opted to run kind of this Bardock Radish Kid, Raditz Kid Goku setup. But there's definitely more options you can use here. And the fact that I got it done with this team on Legendary Vegeta event, that means that this team could beat any of the other ones because the Vegeta one is the hardest one. Um, and it's nice too to break out like the uh, LR Bardock as well. I don't use him very often. Um, you know, the LR Easy A Bardock and like LR Physical Cell, they're kind of in an odd spot because they Easy A'd and they were like solid, but they weren't like, oh my god, they're so crazy. And then there's like just even more power creep. So they just feel super old. Like that Physical Bardock, Physical Cell. Like I really saw it on Physical Cell when I was trying to run him with Int Cell in Red Zone. And that Physical Cell was taking like 400k normals. Like it's insane, like how weak that dude is defensively. So. They just easy ate at a really, really poor time. Kind of unfortunate because there have been some very good LR easy A's. Like Goku Black and Zamasu was like so good, right? Um, so it's just too bad that uh, not all those LR easy A's could be as good. Now, so far uh, with Dokkan Fest easy A's, they've all been really good, right? Like the year three and the year fours, they were really good. Now they've aged out a little bit, but it's taken them like a year to do that. Like they were, they were really good when they dropped. Um, and Gohan itself, just absolutely insane. So yeah, as they keep easying more of these Dokkan Fest LRs, the, the expectations I think are pretty high for those. Whereas for Yellow Coin LRs, it's really kind of like 50-50. Like, are they going to be good? Are they going to be mid? Um, you just don't know what you're going to get with those, right? Um, but absolutely loving Path to Power uh, Kid Goku. He's just been fantastic. Very glad I got him. And then here's our stacking Goku at 4 mil. Sure, we'll take it. Got a crit, which was really good on the STR phase. And then Bardock at 2.7. The one thing I do like about Bardock is his uh, scouter is really good. I did do a showcase on him. I think he's fine. Like, he's a decent unit. Like, he's really good. Um, he's just not my favorite unit because I think... I, there are definitely holes in his kit that I think hurt him a lot. And I think he's going to age fairly quickly. The one thing that won't age is the scouter. Like, having the scouter is really good. But I think eventually he's going to fall off to the point where he might not be worth running. 
Um, I think a couple of his downfalls is one, he gets the scouter only for five turns. But the fact that other than that, it's unconditional, that's still really good. A lot of fights that aren't going to go far past turn five anyways. Um, <clears throat> and Ningen made a good point on the podcast that he runs them with the STR Carnival Goku. And by if you can get that Carnival Goku hit 10 times before Bardock Scouter runs out, then you've got his Scouter to back it up. And then you've got like Scouter to the rest of the fight. So that's kind of cool, right? Um, but like the Bardock needs the super to build up and he only builds up on supers, not just normals. Um, he doesn't have any, it's the same thing that the exchange Goku Gohan suffers from, right? Where like they need to super to exchange, but they don't have any built-in additionals. Well, Bardock's the same way. He doesn't have any built-in additionals, which really hurts him. Um, and he gets different effects on rainbow orbs. And two of them are basically redundant because he's got super effective all types against all types and crits. So I really wish instead of one of those, he had additionals. I think that would be a lot better in whatever capacity, right? If it, Even if it was just like a medium chance to do a super or a medium chance to do a normal that has a chance to be a super, like anything just to give him more procs because he needs the super. I think it's like three or four times to build up. And there are cases where he might just be getting built up, but then his five turn thing wears off. And when his five thing turn wears off, he also loses attack as well. So... I don't know. There's just some wonky things about his kit I'm not a fan of. And, I mean, if the Bardock team overall was better, like, it, if, like, the banner unit Tora would have been a little bit better, like, more like a Raccoon and Goldo type unit, and this Bardock team was more set up like the Ginyu squad, it, it, he just didn't get the same amount of support that the Ginyu squad got, right? And not to mention that Captain Ginyu was a stacker, uh, you know, and did, like, had healing in his kit, like, just... I still really like Captain Ginyu. I think he's good. Now, yeah, he's aged a little bit. It's been a while. But I think if you think of, like, Ginyu and his setup versus Bardock and his setup, at time of release, Ginyu was way more impressive. Ginyu was beating all the hardest content in the game. It was one of the best teams in the game. The quality of unit that Ginyu had for the free-to-play units was way better. With the two LR EZAs, absolutely insane. Um... And then having like some good stacking units, even like AGL Burger uh, there was pretty good also. Having Jace with the Scouter, like even for the free to plays, I feel like the quality was just a little bit better. Now the Bardock EZAs are decent. Like Fasha is kind of cool because she dodges and supports when she dodges. I definitely like that. And then I think it's, uh, I think Shugesh stacks defense. One of them does stack defense. So sure, you could get some use out of that. But the big thing that the Bardock team is missing is they don't have the free to play EZAs. Like Ginyu has two free to play EZA. EZAs that are LRs, um, the physical Ginyu Force and then the tech uh, Ginyu Goku, like those units are both ridiculously good. Whereas the Bardock team has the LR team Bardock, but on global we can't even rainbow them and they haven't gotten an EZA and they're just, they're not runnable. So if Bardock, if had that unit had EZA'd and been rainbowed and been good, had Tora maybe been just a little bit better, and then I think Bardock needed another banner unit. Right? Because Ginyu got two banner units. I think what everyone was expecting from Bardock was to get like a, a Tora Fasha and a Shugas Borga, Borgos or some combo like that, right? Just like Ginyu got. I think had Bardock gotten that treatment and then all those units were brought up to today's standards, I would have liked the team a lot more and maybe pulled a lot harder on it. But for now, for me, I think Bardock is just going to be like a floating support that can Rainbow Orb change once and then has Scouter for five turns. I do think he has value as a floater, but I don't know that I'm going to like running his team like as the leader right now, right? All right, so back to the fight. <laughs> we're getting a little bit deeper into it now. We have taken some damage here and there, but overall we're doing fine. Um, we're going to hit the Doke on attack here with Tech Bardock. Should do some decent damage. This Tech Bardock should be pretty much built up at this point. Uh, linking up with our boy Physical Ranitz, sure. Uh, yeah, 4.2 mil, decent, right? The thing is, is this Bardock, like, it, now mine's 55%, right? So I'm sure if he's rainbowed and you get him fully built up within his first five turns, I think he can hit, like, a 9, 10 mil attack stat, which is good. Uh, but after five turns, that's going to fall off. <clears throat> and he's he's just not going to be, like, the type of unit you want on rotation, I feel like. I feel like he's, as an on-rotation unit, he's going to age out very quick. Um, because all of his value is coming in the first five turns. Excuse me. And uh, 4 mil for Raditz. Chill, Raditz. That's too high of an attack stat for you. Uh, he got the crit knocked him out. So I don't know what everyone's talking about. Raditz is good. He just did a 4 mil attack stat right there. 
Uh, and sure, we'll take a Great Ape Transformation. And this is actually pretty good timing for it because we're just starting Evolution Blue Vegeta, who's the hardest phase. So this is literally just going to give us free damage, right? Now this Goku is going to exemplify and show the difference between why Orange Piccolo's uh, transformation is just on such a different level and why pretty much every other Great Ape transformation is bad. Uh, you'll see, obviously, Goku can't take damage here, right? Which is good, because he would eat a lot right here. Yeah, 500k. But look, 1.2 mil attack stats? And look, we crit. We had to crit to get 700k damage. Barely did damage to this Vegeta. You get this guy in red zone, it's literally going to do, like, double digits. So, these old Great Ape transformations are actually worthless. So, like, yeah, it's cool, you're invincible... But it does nothing. You're literally taking no life off of the boss and you're just stalling out. Because what's going to happen is, is this Great Ape transformation is going to end and we haven't even gotten like a life bar off of this Vegeta. And we've got the same rotation taking a bunch of hits. So it really does nothing for us. Why Piccolo's is so much better is it's got built-in additionals and uh, it does higher attack stats, usually like 3 to 4 mil attack stats. That's enough damage, especially if you're critting with Piccolo, that over the span of all of the attacks he's doing, he does significant damage. And that's why Orange Piccolo is regarded as one of the best characters in the game. So I hope that moving forward, as they EZA and come out with new Grade 8 transformations, that they make them a little bit more on that level. Um, so I'll admit I'm a little bit nervous for my boy Bergamo, but he hasn't EZA'd yet. So I'm hoping if they EZA him, if they put him out with... Uh, an orange piccolo-esque type of great ape like he could be one of the best like banner unit easy A's in the game because you have to remember when bergamo first dropped he was like instantly one of the better units in the game at the time it was actually insane how good he was i remember he dropped uh with i think it was with the global first kaioken goku and people were actually questioning was bergamo better than kaioken goku because kaioken goku we all know he never really hit that hard. He wasn't very good defensively. It was just all about the Spirit Bomb. Now, obviously, the EZA one is busted broken, but they kind of missed the mark on him early on, I'll be honest, because even for the time, you didn't really feel like he hit that hard. And he had to get hit to build up and had no defense, so he was just like a sitting duck trying to build up. Just not a good unit. And Bergamo, like, sure, he had to get hit to build up too, but his buildup was really fast and he was getting the defense instantly. And once you started getting him going just a little bit with his stacking defense on super attack, like he was ridiculous. Um, Bergamo, I mean, for back then, think of how long it was since Kaioken Goku first dropped. That was like, what, a 2017 unit or something? And Bergamo was getting like 500k defense stats. That's a defense stat that today, like when you see 500 defense start a turn, you're like, yeah, that's pretty good on a unit. Bergamo can still do that, and he's super old. So imagine this Bergamo with an easy A, you know, getting to one mil defense fully built up. Like, I feel like that's what he's going to be. And then if they just throw in some guard for even the first two turns or three, like if they give him three turns of guard, you get like two row, like you get two times of him on rotation with guard to just get built up. That's all they got to do for Bergamo, right? And then he's just going to get the stat boost. He's going to be hitting harder. Ah, I'm I'm very excited for him. That's why he's my mascot. Like, if I haven't ever told you that story, uh, the reason why Bergamo is my mascot was I remember watching uh, when he first dropped and I watched Truth Showcase of him and I was just, like, mouth agape. Like, could not believe how good this unit was. And... The fact that Dokkan took this very non-main character, right? Very not popular character and turned him into a god just got me so excited. And I just have loved Bergamo ever since. So my love for Bergamo has nothing to do with him on the actual show. It is all purely Dokkan related. And that's why I like him so much. So uh, you can believe me that whenever this boy EZA is, I'm going to champion this man and do just take him into everything I can and try to dominate once again, praying that they make his EZA good. I think he's a hard unit to mess up because of how defensive he is. But like, yeah, if they don't give him guard and they don't touch his kit very much, yet, like he's not going to be great. The other thing Bergamo needs is we need more of the trio of danger characters. So we need Basil and Lavender in game. Whether and they would probably be free to play, right? Um, I think I think there's a few cards they could make. They could make individual Basil and Lavenders. They could do a Basil and Lavender duo card. But what I hope they do 
is a free-to-play trio of danger LR. I think that would be freaking awesome. <laughs> a trio of danger LR um, to build these boys out. And here's the thing, if Universal Survival Saga, it could be coming soon, you never know. So anyways, guys, there you go. That was me uh, doing my low-class warrior run. I think that team just did just fine. And once again, physical fascia would have really dominated there. So let me know what you guys did for this run. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you all on the next one.